welcome to uh, Let's Build Computers, I think. I've got a custom build here that has come in today. Um, this is a uh, quick one day job. Uh, the customers traveled quite far to come and see me um, because they saw me building um, uh, the Corsair 275R build that I did recently. And they were just like, I want my cables to look like that. Um, and so uh, he called me up and said, can you make my cables look like that? And I was like, sure. So we're doing a cable tidying job today. So um, uh, we want to tidy up all these cables in here. Um, and we've also got, wherever I put them down, here they are. He's bought a, uh, a combo pack of, of braided extensions here. So these are, we, what we're going to do is we're going to pull all of this back, fit these braided extensions, and it's going to make this look, it's going to look really nice. Um, and there's also lots of little tips that I want to give you guys here because this is a really um, this is a really common uh, issue that I talk about a lot um, on this channel when building computers where you've just done your own personal build and you're really proud of it but the cables are just not quite what you hoped and dreamed. The other thing that we need to do as well is we're going to do a little bit of moving around with the fans as well. Um, we've got some unorthodox airflow in this at the moment. The uh, front mount radiator here, uh, we've got a Corsair, what is that, H, yeah, that is a H100i uh, XT RGB, all the rest of it, the nice fancy one. Um, this is the one above the one that I fitted to the 275R build. Um, so this has got RGB ML fans on it. Uh, however, the disadvantage of these ML fans is that the RGB is only on one side of it, which is why Corsair made the light loop, the dual light loop fans, where that had RGB on both sides. Now, on this in this configuration, the fans are supposed to be blowing this direction into the case. However, the customer has mounted them this way around, so they're blowing out out the front of the front panel because he wants to be able to see the RGB on them, which is fair enough. If he turned these around, you wouldn't be able to see the RGB, which kind of sucks. Um, so we need to try and do something about this because we've also got. Uh, these extra be quiet fans up here, or rather we've got a be quiet fan, and I think that's that's the stock um, that's the stock uh, Corsair fan that would have come with the case. So that's just an airflow fan. Um, so these guys are also exhausting. So we've basically just got total negative air pressure in this chassis, which is not ideal because it means that the, the the chassis doesn't really have a proper air intake. It's just going to be pulling in air just through whatever holes in PCI Express plates and like from up here that it can find. And it's not ideal. It's making for a really weird airflow setup in this case. So we don't, again, the obvious solution is to turn around the front fans. So the front fans become your air intake, which is how you uh, should set up this case. Um, I have suggested that we move these fans to be the top and exhaust. So the RGB fans would be on show up here and then we put these two fans sandwiched between the radiator and the front panel out of sight, blowing air through the radiator. But the customer wasn't really on board with that idea. They, they really liked the white fans on the Corsair cooler as, as a whole unit. And I can understand that, that's relatable. So what we're gonna do instead is what um, might get me a lot of hate in the comments, but we'll find out is I'm gonna turn around the back fans. I'm gonna move this one on the back up to the top as well. So we've got two top fans and we're gonna reverse these so that we're doing a top intake. So we've got two top fans blowing down into the case and then going out the front. So we're basically doing reverse airflow. And the thing is, there's no reason why you can't do that. A lot of people will be like, you can't blow air out the intake at the front. Why not? As long as there is airflow going through the case, what, what, what does it matter which direction it's going in? As long as we've got air coming into the case and going out of the case, we have a through flow of air, that's all that matters. It doesn't actually make any difference whether it's going out the front or out the top, as long as it's all filtered. And if we put both these fans at the top, as with all Corsair cases, it's still filtered. So yeah, that's what we're doing basically. Um, and uh, I reckon that's gonna work just fine. So that's what we're gonna do with the fans. There's a couple of other slightly loose areas. We're missing a standoff there. Um, I'm gonna sort that out as well. Um, and yeah, we're just going to tidy this thing up. As an aside, the whirring that you'll hear, I'm testing this YZH electric screwdriver at the moment. And this will be, uh, uh, this will be a very interesting test to see how well it does 
is pulling out these fan screws, no problem whatsoever. I'm not going to talk about it too much in the video, but yeah, if you're wondering what the noise is... For the eagle-eyed amongst you, you will notice that there has been no peels performed in this, in this build. All the cellophane is still on. I will ask the customer to remove it, but he built the computer, it's up to him. I will not be removing the cellophane because they have deliberately left it on. Um, but I will just, I will let them know that they're upsetting a lot of people on the internet by not removing it. <laughs> and in case anyone's wondering as well, this card down here, this is a wireless card, but it's got built-in Bluetooth as well. And it's using a USB header to go from the Bluetooth to USB, which is a bit odd in my opinion, but hey, that's how they've chosen to do it. So power to them, I guess. Uh, we do even have a nice white cable to replace this black one. I did not know that 2060s came in such a fat boy configuration. Obviously it's the super version, but yeah. What a beast. So the customer was also concerned that they hadn't quite fitted their water cooler properly. And it's good enough because like, if I try and twist it, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't wobble. I can barely twist it at all. However, the thumb screws are not done all the way up. Um, let me give you a close up there. So these, you can see I can just easily twist those with my fingers. They should be all the way down until they stop. There we go, now they're not moving. So basically with your fingers until they stop is how tight they should be. Um, so yeah, that's not a complete, you know, it's okay, it would have been doing its job, but we'll probably get better temperatures if we remount this. Um, so I'm gonna take this off and just remount it because I can. Um, this is not a great example. This is not necessarily necessary for cable tidying. However, as I say, we're doing a, just a bit of a, a clean up, uh, just a, a make good with this computer. So uh, yeah, the, the customer's intentions were that I gave it a look over and basically just fixed any small little niggles with it that I saw, basically. Oh, and I just forgot to explain it, but notice how just then, when it was on the CPU, I twisted as I lifted it off. That's how you break the grip of the thermal paste. So this is not so important on Intel, but super important on AMD, where you've got a pin um, socket uh, or a pin CPU. Uh, if you've got thermal paste that's gripping really hard and you just pull the cooler off, you'll likely rip the CPU out of the socket which won't kill it, it's just really unpleasant when it happens. I'm hoping that that hole hasn't been threaded. If the thread for the standoff hole there is gone, then uh, I'm gonna be a bit sad. So the thumb screws for the whoops the thumb screws for the water cooling uh, head are not quite tight enough. Uh, so again, this is just a matter of just be a little bit more brave with these. What I'm going to do normally, I would not advise this for general um, standoffs and stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and just go those just a little bit of an eek. So we'll just go, ooh, and again we're just going to go, ooh. Ooh, and ooh, there we go. Not graunching them, just a little bit of a bite. And that just makes sure that when you uh, apply or remove the thumb screws for the water cooler, it won't take the thumb screw, it won't take the standoffs with them. And it looks like we didn't get very good coverage with the thermal paste. You can see the pattern on there. It really doesn't look like it's spread properly at all. So I think that was just an issue with the um, water cooler not being down tight enough. Yeah, that doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like that thermal paste took very well. So it's quite likely that after remounting all of this, there's probably going to be significantly better temperatures on this as well. So fine. Okay, I'm going to find a standoff for that motherboard. Huh. 
And also, just while I pull stuff out of the back here, I just want to take a quick moment just to point out that in these videos I do where I'm working on other people's builds, um, it often sounds like I'm putting the, the customer on blast. What the heck? Oh, it's an extension. Uh, sure. Okay, yeah. This is a, this is a, a Serial ATA power extension that probably came with the water cooler because the water cooler actually has quite a short power cable on it. So that's an extension for the water cooler, but was actually being used to go from this guy here back down to the hard drive instead of having a chain that goes down to the hard drive and back up. So yeah, that's a bit inefficient, but it works. So there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so I often th I often sound like I'm kind of putting the customer on blast when I'm working on these builds, and that's not my intention. I don't mean to put the customer on blast when I point out anything that I think is wrong with their computer, but the objective is, is if we're making these videos, the idea is, is to point these things out. So if you, the audience, are at home planning on doing your first time build, or if you built a computer before and you want to improve your build or do another one, you can see the mistakes that others have made and avoid making the same mistakes yourself. So yeah, that's the plan there. Um, so as I say, it's not my intention to put anyone on blast in these videos. It's just about just pointing things out just so other people can learn as well. Yeah, we're basically rebuilding this computer. Unfortunately, this is kind of what just, this is kind of what cable tidying often ends up doing. My, I was envisioning that I would just reorganize the cables, but we're basically just stripping and rebuilding this. Wah. Oh well. To save myself from having to work, continue to work around this water cooler, I'm going to go around the front, pull off the front panel and just unbolt this water cooler and take it out for a minute while we build the rest of the computer back up. Um, it was not just to tidy cables, it wasn't necessary for me to strip the whole computer down like this. However, because I wanted to fix that standoff and things like that, that's kind of just where we ended up. And uh, sometimes, again, working on computers is not necessarily about following a set pattern. Lots of people um, in my comments often say, oh, you should always do it this, then this, then this, then this. And I'm like, not necessarily. It's good to have a guide in mind, to have a rough idea and a general theory. But sometimes you've just got to start working on the build and just see where it takes you. In this case, in order to sort out that, in order just to sort out that standoff and other things, this one has taken me in the direction of strip the whole thing down and rebuild it from scratch. So that's what we're doing. The water cooling radiator has the wrong screws in it. I'll show you that in a moment. So the water cooling uh, radiator has been fitted with M3 or metric screws. However, water, certainly Corsair water cooling rads use Imperial, which is the, I can never remember the number, it's 32.6 or something like that. The Imperial thread, you know, the coarse one. Um, and this is a very easy mistake to make because um, metric and Imperial screws are used interchangeably throughout PC. And um, if you're not sure, the easiest way is to just take a, th a screw and just test it on one of the threads and see if it fits. Now this one actually feels a little bit stiff and I'll tell you what's happened here is when this was manufactured, the, the screws, the screw holes were tapped before it was painted. Um, and that means that when I put this, um, when I put the coarse thread in there, which is supposed to fit, that has just immediately gone really stiff. So I'm not the least bit surprised that the customer was just like, oh, that doesn't feel right. It must be the other type of screw. And so they went in with the metric ones. And because there is about a millimeter of paint around the inside of that screw hole, the imperial, the metric ones actually ended up tapping through anyway. However, technically it's the wrong one. 
What I'll probably do, I might just run my Imperial tap through those just to, just to thread them all properly so they fit nicely. That's completely optional. Um, I could just pilot it with a screw anyway. You know, just get a big screwdriver and a screw and just pilot the holes. Um, but yeah, either or is acceptable. PSU fan vent has a little bit of dust on it. Not a problematic amount at all. <clears throat> this thing has a uh, RM750X in it. So the fan on this power supply is probably hardly ever spinning anyway. For my cable tidying thing, now the first thing we have to bear in mind is that we're going to be using braided extensions on this. Braided extensions are these guys. And as you can see, it's an extension cable. So it's got a socket and a plug. Uh, and the idea is, is that because we've got these nice, beautiful individually sleeved wires, these look really, really pretty compared to that dog's dinner. Um, so these things are just, these things are the finishing touches to make a build just look really nice. And these plastic bits here, these are called combs, like a comb that you'd use through your hair. And these just keep all the wires in line. So when they go all out of alignment like here, you can pull the comb back. You can pull the comb back down the wire and it will straighten all the wires out. It's quite stiff on this one, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But this is all stuff you do in the last minute just to get all the wires sitting nicely. It's sometimes known as training the wires to just make them sit in alignment. So on the motherboard, it's gonna go around like that onto the inside. So we're gonna go in through there and I'll leave some slack on that. Now this guy, we've now got to bury all this cable. And herein lies the disadvantage of braided extensions is you have an awful lot more cable to bury. This extension is really heckin' long. Uh, this is like, this must be 40 centimeters. Um, but then they're often this long. There's not much you can do really, it's very frustrating. So we've got to find a way of burying a lot of spare wire now. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bury all of that in here. So I'm gonna take the, um, I'm gonna take this ATX wire and I'm gonna bundle it all down in the bottom of this recess. And we're gonna plug the extension in. And just push that guy down there. There we go. And now we've got just an extension. We may have to organize this a couple of times to get it into place, but we'll see. And I'm gonna let that be a mess because it won't be visible from the back. And I've just tried to keep that at the back so we're retaining as much space in this void as we can. However, it's going to get cramped in here because of these extensions. They're difficult to use, but they really make a lovely difference. Okay, that's our CPU power connector buried. So we'll stick an extension on that. So we know that this one is the CPU because as you can see, it's a four plus four. So we've got two four pin blocks as opposed to the graphics card ones, which are a six plus two. So we've got a six block and a two block. So although, they're, although these guys are all eight pin connectors, they are not the same. The pinning on them is different. They are not interchangeable. If you're buying braided extensions, in this case, the customer bought a multi-pack that came with the, um, uh, the ATX, the CPU, and two VGA cables. So that was fine. If you're buying individual ones, personally, I wouldn't bother with the CPU because the CPU, we're going to see about that much of it, basically. And, you know, it's arguable that all of these braided extensions are usually just for the last 
two inches or so of the wire, but the CPU takes that to the extreme quite often on most computers, unless you're actually getting your head in there to look, you can't see this cable at all. So because this cam is part of the pack, we'll fit it anyway. But if you're buying individual cables, don't bother getting a CPU, in my opinion. There's a strong argument to be made at this point of uh, taking the power supply out, plugging in all of your modular cables, and then putting the power supply back in. But then on the other hand, if you do that, you'll then have a mare of a time trying to get all the cables down into this void here. So it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Cable tidying is hard. It is a pain in the ass and it takes a long time. So you have to experiment and see what works for you and what works for the build you're currently working on. Right, now once again, I'm gonna try and push all the excess of this wire down into that void. I'm running out of space in here, so I don't know if we're gonna get both of these in, but I'm gonna try. Right, I'm not gonna try and get the second one in there, so we're gonna lay this down on the back here. And that will all flatten under the back panel. And now we've got our two PCI Express endpoints. Let's plug in our braided extensions. And I'm gonna be taking these braided extensions out this part up here in the top left of your screen. Um, and that is gonna come out next to the radiator. This is not technically the correct exit hole. The correct exit would be either here or the grommet down in the middle. But because we've got quite a long graphics card, I know from past experience with this case, the graphics card is actually coming out to around about here. So if we bring the cables around here, we'll get a nice smooth loop into the graphics card and that will look nicest. And it also means that we don't have to try and get the cables out here or here where we don't have room. We can go over there where there is still room. There we go. Right, that is not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's all in there. And the other side of the case, theoretically, should look mint. Okay, let's flip this over and hope that all of this doesn't fall out. Oh, it didn't, it didn't. All right. Right, in goes the motherboard again. So I'm just gonna thread this down between the wires. Simple front panel on this because Corsair don't like hard drive LEDs anymore. I'm not gonna do it on this chassis just because I didn't check with the customer beforehand. But if you do like having your hard drive activity LED, plug your, um, uh, plug your power LED into the hard drive activity LED slot instead. And then your power LED blinks when your hard drive is doing the things. So yeah, just a little tip bit. Let's get our CPU power cable plugged in. So this guy is gonna be a little bit heavy because we've got to get him around the corner. Just gonna try and pull the cone down slightly on that to keep the wires in line. These cones are mega stiff. Sometimes they just slide up and down. This one does not. There we go, that's on. So as you can see, all you get is just that little splash of white up there. It's up to you whether that is actually worth doing or not. But, you know, if you want just all those little finishing touches. Right, I'm just gonna take this upright to try and straighten this guy out. Because as you can see, these cables have all gone wonky. And if those are not all perfectly aligned, then that kind of defies the point of having them. I've just pulled out one of the combs from the back, the, the next comb down the chain, which has just given me much more flexibility of these wires around behind the motherboard tray. So I'm just massaging those with my hand now to try and get them to all straighten out here.
There we go. That's about right, I think. Now next I'm going to get our water cooler fitted again because uh, this is going to get in the way of everything. So I want it in there just so I can see where it's all going to sit. Um, I'm just going to clean off the old thermal paste so we can put some fresh stuff on. And for the curious, it's a 9700K down there. Very nice. Now, when putting in a radiator like this, the first pro tip that I would normally give has already been done on this water cooler. And that is to make sure that when you've mounted the fans up to the radiator, the wires are coming out at the, at the bottom of the case or the back of the case, depending on your perspective. Uh, it's very easy just to bolt them in any which way how. And if you've, got your, um, if you've got your radiator mounted up here and your fan wires are coming out here and here, there's nothing you can do that will make those fan wires not be visible. Whereas if you've turned the fans around so the fan wires are coming out the bottom, what we can do now is we can immediately thread those fan wires through these holes down here, which are specifically there to hide fan wires at the front of the case. I mentioned earlier on that the wrong screws have been used on this radiator, so some of these threads are not quite perfect. So what I'm going to do now is take an imperial screw, which is the coarse thread, and a big ass screwdriver, and I'm just going to run this screw through all the holes just to straighten those threads out. If the threads were completely screwed, I do have an actual um, tap and die for doing holes like this. And I could run that through it. However, in this case, just driving the correct screw down with a big screwdriver is enough to straighten those out. And now subsequently, when I put that in there, it just goes straight in, no problem at all. I will reuse the washers on these screws because um, you only need very short screws going into water cooling rads and that's why the water coolers come with these extra washers just to add a bit of padding into the screws so you don't just drill straight into the radiator core. There we go. Monkey tight, not gorilla tight. I love that phrase, I can't remember who said it to me. I saw it in a comments, but it's brilliant. Now to deal with the wiring loom, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it all straight up the top and down through this hole here. Just get all of it straight out the back of the case and out of sight. And I'm going to pull those back to there and just wire tap and just wire tie them there, just so they are held in, just so they are held in place. And we've got power to the system, and now we've got to deal with all these fan wires. So we've got a single pin. Uh, speed speed sender wire here 
I'm going to peel that back off of the ribbon, thread that back through the hole, and I'm going to plug it into the CPU fan header. So that now means that the CPU fan header will read the speed of the CPU fan as the pump speed from the water cooler. And the fans have got two wires each. We've got a fan wire, which is a four pin PWM fan wire to power the rotor. And then we've got RGB uh, wires to power the LEDs. Um, so if you were doing a Corsair build and you had a Corsair RGB controller, like a Commander or a Node Core, um, you would plug these into your RGB hub, hence to RGB hub. However, on this one, um, the water cooler itself has a rudimentary built-in one for these two fans here. So we can plug these guys in to there and there. Fans, same deal. You could plug these into your motherboard or an independent fan controller. Or in this case, once again, the water cooler has got a header wire that can handle them internally. And then there will be a USB cable going from the water cooler um, to a internal USB header port, which then means it can talk to the Corsair IQ software to do RGB and fan control. However, by default, it will do just rainbow RGB and it will do a, a quote unquote a normal fan curve, which is completely agreeable. You can leave these on the default and they're okay. They can just be a bit quieter if you tune them. There we go. I haven't gone ham with the tidying on these fan wires because fans are some of the most common things that you'll want to pull out and reroute at some point. They're also the hardest ones to really do a cable porn job on. Um, but what I've done is I've just uh, I've just wrapped the, um, I've, these are the RGB ones, so I've just wrapped those, stuck a cable tie on them. Same deal with the fan wires. So we've just got two looms that are just sitting in place there now. And that means that they're ordered at least. So it's easy to actually pick apart the wiring should it be necessary to. Now I've got a couple of oddball wires to do, starting with the USB cable for the water cooler. Um, so that is this guy here, and he's going to plug into there, and we're going to run this guy again. We're going to take that out the top where we took the rest of the wiring loom for the water cooler. Notice how I'm just trying to take that around the sides of the VRM heat sinks just so it's a bit less noticeable. Now I'm taking that down the back and up through this bottom grommet where it's going to plug into a USB 2 header. And now we've got another oddball one, which is this wireless card. Now that was previously plugged into this 1x slot here, but I'm actually going to take that down to the absolute bottom slot, because then it's going to sit and cover up the bottommost cables here while we're at it. Almost forgot my uh, HD audio cable. And there's absolutely nothing stopping me from plugging this short card into a long slot. It is exactly how PCI Express is intended to work. Longer slots can just take longer cards. And that has now done a little bit more to cover up the HD audio cable. But also, it means it's going to give me a nice little hidey spot for the wire that goes into the back of this guy. There we go, that's our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi taken care of. Graphics card in. Bam. Now at this point I can see I was way off the mark with bringing the PCI Express lines up under the radiator. It is not too late for me to bring them out here instead. So I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah. This is a bit of a jungle, this, but now with the way these are going, I need this fold to go the other direction. So I'm going to give that a right proper fold back there. And I'm just going to take out that comb as well, because we don't need this many combs in the wire. It's making it too stiff and difficult to work with.
So what I'm going to do, where this is a six pin, we've got cable braids in. Because this is braided, what I can actually do is if I just take off this end comb, I can actually take off the plus two and just peel that all the way back. And I'm going to hide this around the back of the case so it becomes a six pin. And later on, if the customer upgrades to a dual eight pin card, they've got an extra two pin that they can then just bring back into the front again. And just to make that look pretty, I'm just going to shorten down that comb. Boop. And boop. combs can always be replaced. I'm just twisting the combs left and right just so the cables settle in them and that puts these nice smooth radius curves in. There's going to be a little bit of bundling where it actually goes into the back of the case. That's almost impossible to avoid. You can push one of the combs back just to min minimize that though. And I'll just try and get those to be the same length. There we go. Look at that. Lovely. If you're running top fans that are going to go close to water cooling hoses and wires and stuff like that, just make sure you triple check that if these guys just flop about in movement or anything like that, they're not going to strain to fan blades. Because these fans are actually pointing down, it's really easy for me to avoid that. But normally these fans would be pointing upwards and the rotors would be very, very close to these water cooling hoses. So just watch out if you're doing a configuration where you've got two top fans like this. It would be nicer to leave one of the fans at the back here, but the problem is, is that there's no dust filter on this vent here. So if we're going for a reverse, reverse airflow um, installation like this, then, uh, well, I mean, I suppose you could have two top intakes and an exhaust here, but, uh, I don't like having a top intake and an exhaust there because you've just got air that's just going straight through the system. And on a water-cooled system like this, that's doing nothing um, because what you need is to get air to go through the case to pick up the hot air from around the graphics card. That's the objective here is to pick up the hot air from the graphics card and get it out the case. And if you've got very small things, like we've got a little bit going on here where we're going to have air that comes down here and straight through that fan. That's okay, because at least it's going through the radiator. But if we had air coming down here and straight out that fan, it's not doing anything. You could argue that it might be helping your VRM slightly, but... So yeah, I can see um, I can see these fans changing in the future of this case. It would be really nice to drop in some additional Corsair RGB fans to finish the job. And for that reason, I'm not gonna do anything special with these fan cables. I'm just gonna run them straight over the back and I'm just gonna plumb them just straight into the fan headers down at the bottom right of the motherboard here. And that also means that these fans are really easy to reconfigure if the customer later on changes his mind and decides he wants to reorient the fans again. Okay, the back, not my finest hour. However, we've got a huge amount of power cabling in a very compact space here. That's about as much as I can do without having full custom cables in this thing. Um, to do something that's actually any better than this, you'd have to go to Cable Mod and spend a hundred plus pounds on all custom individually braided cables from the power supply. Um, that would be the way forward there. Um, whereas a braided extension pack like this is like 30 quid for the whole set. So it's much cheaper. It does mean that this is a bit of a dog's dinner. However, what we do now is we go, Ugh. and no one will ever see it. And that is it, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. We've got a lovely tidy interior now. Um, and we've got those lovely braided extensions, which are really the finishing touch on a build like this. 
Um, so I hope you guys got lots of ideas on how you can implement stuff on your next build or even just tidy up your own. Thank you very much for watching. Hang around for the end card. All the support links are there and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for now. Bye.